Hello and welcome to Clicking Keys. This is the first episode in a series of Learning to Apple Script. The focus of this video will be the script editor application, its interface, and how to interact with it. Let's get started. The first thing we'll need to do is find the script editor application on our computer. If we open up a new finder window and navigate to our applications folder, within there we should be able to scroll down and find the utilities folder. And inside the utilities folder is where you'll find the script editor application. Double clicking the script editor application will cause it to launch and it will create a brand new script window for us. Let's talk a little bit about the script editor interface and get you a little bit familiar with what your different options are. At the top left, you'll notice a name of your script. You can click on this to rename it or you can rename it when you save your script later. At the top right, you'll notice several different buttons for changing or interacting with your script. And at the bottom, by default, we're seeing this accessories view, which is currently showing us the description pane. Uh, we can change the different pane by these icons on the bottom left, and I'll talk a little bit more about those in a moment. I can also show or hide the accessories view by toggling it. Um, then I've got this hammer icon, which is to compile my script. By compiling your script, the script editor will then validate what you've written. The next button is a play button. This will allow you to run your script and test it to see if it's doing what you're expecting it to do. There's a stop button that can be used for stopping your, your running script or stopping the recording that happens with this next button when you're trying to record some Apple script based off of what you're doing on your computer. I will warn you that this recording option does work in some applications, not all applications, and it's also very verbose. To give you an example, I'll go ahead and click the record button. I'll tell it to make a new folder, and I'll even name this folder. As I've done that, you can see that it's automatically created some code, and I'll click the stop button. And now we can see I've got some uncompiled code here that does in fact tell the finder to activate make a new folder on my desktop, and then lastly rename that folder to the word demo. If I delete this demo folder and I compile my script and I run it again, we'll see that I will in fact get a new folder called demo created on my desktop. Next, let's talk a little bit about the accessories view. Like I talked about before, this first element is the description. This allows me to write some information about what my script is. This is basically comments to myself to remind me what I was writing the script for and what the purpose of it is. Next, we've got the results tab. This results tab will show you the last thing your script returns when it finishes its execution. So in this case, it's returning the word demo because that was the last element that was returned from everything that happened within my script. If I go to the messages or excuse me, the logs tab, you'll see I've also got result in this first pane, which is really the exact same thing as this result tab. Then I've got messages, which will return the result of my executed script, as well as any messages that have taken place throughout that processing. An example of a message would be if I told it to log something here as it was executing, that would show up in the messages tab. The events tab will show you everything that was logged from the result, the messages, as well as the events. So anything that I'm doing throughout my script as it's interacting with different applications are going to show up in the events tab. And lastly is the replies tab. And this tab will show you the result, all of the messages, all of the events, plus the replies from those events. So as an example, I'll write a little bit more code here. We'll go ahead and compile this just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. So here I've told the application pages to launch. I've told it to then make a new document. I've told my script to log a message, demo message. Then we're telling the finder to activate, make a new folder on my desktop, rename that folder demo, and then lastly, we'll tell it to return true. This example script will allow us to see several different things that are going to take place in these different log tabs. So we'll start with the result tab and I'll go ahead and run my script. So in the background, we can see that pages has been 
opened and created a new document for us. If we go back to the script editor, we'll see the result tab is showing true. And that's because that's the very last thing that was returned from all of the processing that happened in my script. Next, if we click on the messages tab, we'll see the message demo message that I logged within my script, but we'll also see the result true. Just like I said, each of these tabs build on the information you see as you go from left to right. So now if I look on the events tab, we're going to see all of the events that took place, the messages that were that have been executed, as well as the result. And then lastly, if, if I go to the replies tab, the results, the messages, the events, and now the additional replies that each of the events gave throughout the execution of my script. You can also choose to clear out this log at any time by just clicking on this trash can and that will clean out your messages and start over fresh. Thanks for watching this first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I do plan on creating additional videos in this series. Please subscribe or like to be notified of future videos and learn more about how to AppleScript.